Hello, everyone. My name is Laura Lee Rourke, and this is It's Not About Food podcast. So today we're going to talk about declaring your independence from dieting and body hatred and worrying about what you look like and who you are and what you sound like and all of this stuff and move into acceptance of yourself, of your body, of your life. So acceptance is a weird thing because it sounds like in the culture that we live in, like we just give up, you know. It doesn't mean that. It doesn't mean that you can't still learn and grow and change and be, you know, your best self. You, of course, can do that. But you have to accept where you are right now. So accepting the body that you have right now, accepting the weight that you are right now, is sort of a starting point to getting healthier, getting better, getting more you, really, not somebody else, not somebody else's idea of what you should look like and be like. So um, the, the topic today that I wanted to talk about is how do you even know that you're okay? (laughs) How do you even know that your body is okay and that this is your natural weight and this is what it's supposed to be like? Um, When Carol and I wrote the book, It's Not About Food, that was a big question that we would get all the time. How do I know what my natural weight is? So just wanna read this one sentence that says, At some point in this process, you will reach your natural weight. If you eat when you're hungry, eat what your body is hungry for, and stop when you're full, in otherwise mindful eating or intuitive eating, your body will find the size and shape it's meant to be. Keep in mind, this is a genetic coding. So if you're trying to look like somebody from, say, Switzerland and your ancestors came from Hungary, you you might look different because there's two different parts of the world and they do two different things and there's a lot of different gene codes. So keep in mind that many women are already at their natural weight, but they don't like, they don't like it. And that was my story actually. I liked to be really extremely thin because that's how I th- I was taught to be. I was a young model. I was already very tall and thin, and I was told to be thinner. They couldn't make me taller or shorter, but they could make me thinner. And that was like the way that I thought I should be. And I had to really jump through a lot of hoops in order to be that thin. So when I started to grow and change and mature into a woman, I did not like it. I thought I was too fat. And it was just the way my body was genetically coded to be. It was my lifestyle. It was how I lived and how I worked. It was whether I was well or, you know, it just was a lot of different things going into that. But it was pretty much my natural weight. When I started really suffering from an eating disorder and starting to starve and then binge and then starve and then binge, my whole way of how my body operated sort of went really wonky. So it took a long time for my body, a lot of recovery, for my body to be okay with not ever starving or binging again. Not that I didn't overeat sometimes. Not, Of course, we do. We're human. Sometimes we do. There's lots of cake and it looks good to us. And and not that there's anything wrong with cake. Cake is great. But sometimes we overeat. Sometimes we undereat. And sometimes we're busy, we forget to eat. These are just a normal human thing. But our bodies know pretty much where they want to be most of the time. And if we can take the 
the pressure off of our bodies to look a certain way, to be a certain size, then it, our bodies get to do what they do best, which is be a body. They know when they're cold. They know when they're hot. They know when they want to eat. They know when they want to go for a walk. Our bodies know how to pee. We don't have to think about it. We know exactly. And if we can take the pressure off of them, then they can just be their body, their own natural self. So if you stop overeating or undereating, if you stop dieting and hating your body, whatever size it is, the weight that it goes to, that's your natural weight. At this age, with this genetic coding, this is how your body is showing up. And our job, I feel, is to move into acceptance. As soon as you can do that, it'll be a lot easier. And again, this doesn't mean that you can't get healthier because you can, or you can't, you can't get stronger and you can't get weller and you can't get happier, you know, because of course you can. To me, a lot of what's going on with us is a sense that we're not okay, no matter what. It didn't really matter how thin I got. I still wanted to be thinner, really. That was the truth. And I thought I looked great when other people thought I was dying of cancer. So it, it wasn't, I wasn't a well woman about that. And I had to really trust other people when they said, you look fine, you look great. And I had to trust my body to know what it needed to weigh and where it, how it needed to be. So another part that I want to say that when we reach our natural weight, our job is to accept that. But also you might get a lot of feedback from other people. And um, it might be, oh, you look great. Have you lost weight? You know, that's a thing that people say all the time that I pretty much hate, but people do say it. And I came up with, with a, a comeback on that. And I would say, you know, my weight is not up for discussion in a nice way. But I would put that boundary down because I didn't want to talk about it anymore. I didn't want to talk about my weight or what I ate or what kind of, you know, exercise I did. I didn't, this was so boring to me after a while. So I would say, have you seen any good movies? What are you doing in your life? How are you doing? Um, have you read any great books lately? How's that going with your mom? You know, I would sort of take it back to a different discussion rather than my weight and how I looked and then how they looked. And we get into this horrible conversation of, oh, you look great. No, I no, I don't look great. You look great. No, no, you don't. You, I look horrible. You look great. You know, and it just goes around and around. It's like such a silly thing to be doing. So when you have the tools to take care of yourself emotionally, which is putting down boundaries, and you have the tools of taking care of yourself spiritually, which means you get to be who you are. You get to rock your own world with yourself, with your life. And you take care of yourself physically, meaning you eat when you're hungry, you sleep when you're tired, you move when your body wants to move. Then those are your ways to get through this whole, what is my natural weight? Am I there yet? That, that whole question can just be put aside and go to what does your body want to do? What does it say? What does your spirit want to do? What does it say? What does your emotional self say? And what does it want to do? So the last thing I want to talk about is that rather than worrying about our weight and our looks, 
Why don't we worry about so social justice? Why don't we worry about this war that's going on? What if we worry about how it doesn't seem that our politicians are protecting us very well? Why don't we worry about climate change? Why don't we worry about um, poverty and little kids going to bed hungry and without a house? That to me is what we should sort of be putting our attention on. But our bodies are a good scapegoat because taking all of that other stuff in and sitting with Oh my God, what are we going to do? It's going to be the hottest year on record and we just had one. And oh, wow, there are tornadoes already happening. And, you know, oh no, what are we, how can we help these people in Ukraine and people in Russia really, you know, who are being, it's just, they're in this horrible situation. How can we help them? How can, what can we do for all the kids that are, that don't have a home? How can we get, you know, housing for the homeless people? How can we do that? So that to me, we get tired of thinking of that. We don't know what to do. Our little brains, our little human brains just get like, oh, it's too much for me. And we feel like it's too much for us. So I can obsess about that my hips are too big or that I have wrinkles on my face, it's almost 72. I can obsess about, well, it, you know, maybe if I do something, change my whole diet, then I will be stronger and leaner and I'll live forever. You know, these are crazy thoughts too, <laughs> but they seem more reasonable and more handable. You know, I can handle that. I, oh, lose 20 pounds? I got that one. Stop the war in Ukraine? <laughs> I don't know what to do. You know, it's very, very sweet of us as humans to be knowing what the problem is, knowing that there's nothing you can do, and then come up with a different way that we can try to take care of ourselves. It's almost like there's a part of me that's a little, a little girl and sees that I get, uh, I get upset about something I'm seeing on the news. And that little girl says, hey, you know what would be good? Getting into a really small bikini this summer. <laughs> you know, and of course, it's so sweet of me to come up with that. But um, that's not the issue. You know, it's not the issue. I can wear a bikini or not. It doesn't matter. It's not the issue. The issue is I am overwhelmed with news of the world a lot of the time, and I don't know what else to do. So when you start to go on this process or in the middle of it, or even at the end of it, where you're eating when you're hungry, you're taking your, care of yourself emotionally and spiritually, you're trying to live as um, good as you can, as a good person and a, wonderful mom or dad or sister or brother or daughter, you know, whatever it is, and you're trying your hardest to do what you can do. Listen to the way you talk to yourself. Instead of patting yourself on the back, you got through another day of bad news and some good news, and you didn't have to go on a diet, and you didn't have to start thinking that you know, taking up smoking again is a good idea, doing heroin or, I don't know, cheating on your spouse. You know, you, you just followed your life, followed your passion, followed your heart, and just be kind to yourself. Your natural weight is what your body wants to weigh. Your natural emotional state is whatever your feelings are, and they come and go. And your natural spirit is flying high and just thinks that you're the most awesome person in the world. Remember those three things. Thank you very much. And uh, I would love to have anyone be a Patreon supporter 
So you get this uh, video a week early, I think. And I don't know, maybe you get to go to dinner with me is the, is the, is the first prize. And then the second prize is you don't have to go to dinner with me. Thank you very much. And we'll see you next month. <laughs>